everybody and welcome to the NBA Show Reviews. This is James Cork and with me I have Norman Sanso. Well, looks like we caught Norman in the uh, sleeping time. That happens when you're an old man, I guess. <sighs> Hopefully our other guest will be more awake and awesome running reviewer Silverquill. Welcome to our nightmare, Alice. You know what? I'd rather have you been awake. I'm uh, asleep. I'm kind of scared of you right now. What? Hello, Clarice. Oh, no. Additional movie quote in the creepy voice. Uh. And then Inception, Inception horn. Oh. Bom, bom. Okay. <laughs> so, so what happened now? Uh, it's a, no, Norman, it's okay, go back to sleep, we don't really need you for this review. Okay. Um, <laughs> let's and just today, say, oh gosh. Let's just say James is in an episode of Pants to be Darkened. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Very much so. I, oh, I hope not. But, no, we are not darkening any pants, we are not dreaming, we are not sleeping, we are awake. And we are reviewing episode 13 of season 5. That is overall episode number 104, titled The Princess's Dream of Magic Ship, with story by Jason Thiessen and Jim Miller, and written by Scott Sonborn. Now, in this episode, Princess Luna enlists the main six to hunt down a magical force that turns dreams into nightmares. So, well, um... What, it's, we haven't done this in a while, so I'm just going to go through the motions and ask you guys, what do you think about this episode in particular? What, where, where do you think this one falls into uh, the episodes that we have so far? Because for now, this is the last episode we have of season 5, until they, you know, they release it back into in, 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 in September. September 12th. Oh gosh, the wait. So uh, what do you think of this one, uh, Silver? Well, first off, I call false advertising. There were no sheep. They pulled the wool over us. It's the fleecing of the fandom. <laughs> oh, well, we should uh, all go to the uh, HX and set it on fire, then. They are liars. Uh, they should uh, die. Ah, uh, loney. <laughs> oh, <laughs> wow. Ah. Puns. Puns all over. Wow. That's right. You heard me. So, in all honesty, speaking as a Luna fanboy, I mean, I love seeing her in an episode always. I'm going to surprise people in that I actually think that this did not do her character a lot of service. Oh. I guess I should get really get into this when we discuss the episode proper, but there is an art to a redemptive character. And right now with this, it was punishment for punishment's sake, but no opportunity for growth until the very end when Luna... Says so a line that I thought was like, well, Luna, you, you might want to check your phrasing on that. That, that doesn't sound quite right. Now, where, however, the shout outs in this episode, especially with the ponies in the dreamscape is perhaps even more delightful than slice of life because now their shenanigans are working towards the, uh, uh, the resolution of a conflict that is a menace. And I've always said, when when the world's at stake, I'd like to see ponies be more proactive. Well, here's Filthy Rich with his shut up and take my money magic. (laughs) Also known as the Iron Man technology. (laughs) The Iron Man technology. And, of course, the single greatest royal in all of Equestria now. Move aside, Twilight. Now is the time of Princess Big Macintosh. (laughs) Oh, my God. But, you know, I will agree with that. Uh, we're gonna go further into that, into that discussion when we get to the episode review in itself, but I definitely agree with what you said right there about the, uh, shout outs, uh, being a lot better handled in this episode than in a slice of life. They felt a bit more organic, less, um, artificial. Um, but what about you, Norm? Uh, well, I, 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 unless you have anything else to say. That's it. Uh, no, that's as general as I want to get it. We'll save the specifics for when the time comes. Mm. Awesome, well, awesome. As for me, I, I don't know what to expect of this one because it's a episode featuring Luna. It's about nightmares and dreams. So, okay, this is interesting. Well, I, I didn't read the synopsis, so I got no idea what's happening. But after watching this, I kind of like where it was going. But there was a few things that bugged me here and there. 
I, I guess when we review it, I'll bring it up if I can remember what bugged me. But overall, I do like this episode. What about you, James? This is the kind of episode that it's like, yeah, yeah, this is awesome, this is great, this is great, this is great. And then a couple of these pass, then you watch it again and I'm like, hmm, it's not so hot anymore. Like, it's, it's, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm not saying it's like, uh, terrible because there is a lot of imagination thrown into it. And I, I, I'm, I'm gonna sound terrible. I'm gonna sound like a terrible person, but I really like to see Princess Luna suffering. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, and it is true. It is suffering for suffering's sake, but <sighs> I don't know. I think we never saw Luna dealing with this kind of thing, uh, head on, or at least we didn't have an insight on this, uh, uh, from this moment uh, until this moment, and it, it always felt kind of odd that Luna accepted the forgiveness of all the characters in the show uh, instead of like you know having kind of like a I'm not sure if you should call it refractory period or whatever, but there was no point where she was like maybe I don't deserve this forgiveness, maybe I don't deserve to be uh, forgiven, maybe I deserve to keep being punished. So I think it goes back to what she was talking about to Upper Bloom in the uh, Bloom, Bloom and Gloom episode, where sometimes you you feel like you've been trapped in a nightmare, even though the thing that you are worrying about is not that important anymore. So I like I like that parallelism with that episode. But yeah, I think this is one of the ones that I would give it a ten out of ten on release day, and then I will drop it to like a seven or eight. Uh, a couple of days later after watching. And you but say I, you like seeing Luna suffer. Love oh it. Oh my. Yes. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, come on. That's my favorite leg. Ow. <laughs> Why? <laughs> now I will not be able to run the marathon. <laughs> but you'll have a leg up on the competition. <laughs> I could always put a motor on it. <laughs> Oh, anyway, well, well se- fly, segue leg, fly, <laughs> <laughs> and then the leg will just keep going on its own. <laughs> but anyway, we're definitely drifting away from this one, drifting into the world of dreams. Mm-hmm. But uh, we're gonna start talking spoilers from this moment on. Uh, so, you guys, if you haven't watched the episode, I don't know what is wrong with you. I mean, come on, it's the last episode that we we've had for a while. You 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 should be watching it already. Uh, mm-hmm. If you haven't watched it, go watch it, and then come back and listen to us keep rambling about it. So, um, don't worry. We'll wait. You can come back later. So, um, okay. We start the episode... Okay, we uh, before we start reviewing it and everything, should we talk about this with uh, through themes or through uh, uh, scenes and moments? Hmm. I, I vote scenes and moments as it's a pretty straightforward affair. Mm-hmm. I'm with. I'm in the same boat as Silver because the themes for this one is not much. If if you go for themes, we don't cover much. If you go scene by scene, there's a lot to talk about. I uh, I I agree. I agree. We should go scene by scene. Besides, it, it, this is like you said, straightforward. This is not like a Christopher Nolan uh, movie. There is no need to draw straws or make or connect lines on a on a on a blackboard. This is a lot simpler. So, um, we start in, uh, the castle of the two sisters, which apparently still, still is in ruins, as the main six, uh, confront Princess Luna, who is turning into Nightmare Moon. Again. Uh, once more, um, but something happens while they are fighting and they are, like, uh, battling against each other, something, kind of like a weird thing made out of dark matter, escapes outside of the dream. And Luna gets tra- outside of, like, yeah, what seems to be the dreamscape. And uh, Luna gets trans- transformed back into Princess Luna. And she wakes up. So it's like, why? And she's like, what? My dream had a happy ending? That's not how it's meant to be. I'm not meant to have a happy ending. <laughs> Something is wrong. Oh, wow. Well, so, James, I, James I, I noticed a certain defense mechanism in your summary. I believe okay. your brain is blocking out a very important facet. <laughs> No, I didn't go into detail. That's why we are. Uh, that's why we're here. Oh, no. So I, th- I think it's cognitive dissonance. <laughs> you don't. You don't want to talk about the one thing that this already features a return. <laughs> oh no! I 
you, no, I'm not sure what you're talking about. There is nothing wrong with this scene. I mean, it's it's not horrible in the rainbow power design. So... <laughs> oh. There it is. There it is. Acknowledge your problem, James. Oh. What? No, I have no problem. Shut you, up. You, you, want to know something, you want to know something fun? I recently went to a Toys R Us and they sold blind bags. Awesome. And I got rainbow power Pinkie Pie. Yay. Why? <laughs> and she looks cool. Confront the rainbow, mother bucker. <laughs> you know what? I think this is one of the points where uh, after watching the episode, I was like, ah, oh, yeah, this was here. Because after that, you forget completely that the rainbow power designs come make a comeback. Uh, I mean, because everything else in the episode looks so pretty and so gorgeous and so beautiful and it's so imaginative. And then they throw you this right away. This scene here, like the whole scenario, skipping a lot of scenes, whatever, it's Luna appears, the main six confront her, she becomes evil, Nightmare Moon, ha 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 And then the main six says, okay, we got a solution for this. Everybody, power up to Super Saiyan level. Yay! Rainbow powers activate. Now, use the rainbow power of doom to destroy the evil. Apparently, in the scenario here, the main six doesn't win. Like what Luna always dreamt of. They fail, and she is stuck in a loop where she is Nightmare Moon forever. But somehow, things change. Which, of course, that makes things awkward, because if you follow that to sort of its its extreme conclusion, Luna has dreamt of killing the main six almost every night. Mm -hmm. And I just like, wow, that's dark. But when, when this scene started unfolding, Luna's becoming Nightmare Moon again, Rainbow Powers activate, I thought to myself... Oh god, I'm in a fanfic. <laughs> Which one? The one the one that basically repackages show elements and tries to present it as its own. <laughs> you know, it is that when it comes to the uh, you're right. It kind of feels like a fanfic, but I think that's kind of like what we should have been expecting because I mean, this is the first time we have had a, a full-on focus episode on Princess Luna. Since perhaps Luna Eclipse. Like, this episode is pretty much all about her, her mistake, her trying to fix it, her confronting it, getting the help of the main six and then the rest of the town. Like, when it, when you think about it, any fanfic that focuses on Princess Luna uh, has her as this, you know, torture, kind of like, redemptive, oh, I'm so dark and you don't know it kind of character. Uh, the Luna in the show is not like that. Perhaps this is kind of... Until now, but I mean that's I I don't know I kind of I kind of approve it because yeah okay she can be fun loving like doing stuff funny things and all that and attending parties and arguing with her sister over the presents but she could also have a dark side. Well, we're not quite at the point to talk about Luna and the the Tantibus. Mm, not yet, not yet. But- but just that 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 open is like oh it's it's rainbow power <laughs> i'm used i'm used to it now but that doesn't mean i like it are you i'm not i'm so not used to the rainbow power i'm not and i never will i i don't mind it that much like it's nice i like what they did with twilight with adding that yellow yeah. but let's not nice. linger on like let's carry on like after luna i'm going to show you the exa- the, the, the the meaning of nice later on Norman. and i am not uh, going to be but no, let, let's not linger on like after uh, well, luna wakes up she yeah, realized that what that was not supposed to happen and intro song her bed design is perfect by the way <laughs> this, i love yeah. that bedroom is this the first time we get to see princess yes. luna's room yes indeed have we Very seen celestia's so. room yeah, we Not have yet. at the end of yeah we have at the end of season four. I know that's like her study. Wait, end of season four, she was at the Crystal Empire. No, beginning of oh. season four. Yeah, no, no, no. At the no, at the end of season four, she was. Uh, you're right, Silver. She was at the at the Crystal Empire. Hmm. You're correct. We have no. Wait a minute. Beginning. Don't we don't we count? Uh, any time Twilight was sending Celestia later sorry, sorry. in season one. Guys, guys, guys. Uh, there was in the end of season four where. Or oh, was it beginning of season five? I, I forgot, but, uh, there was the roots or whatever, the ever free forest that tangled and kind of kidnapped them. Or was yeah, it T-Rex? Uh, I forgot. I think it was T-Rex. I thought, I thought the room where Celestia and Twilight are 
Is the same room that Twilight is in the Princess Spike episode? I don't think so. We are, discussing be- we are discussing bedrooms now. Can we talk about Luna having a weird looking clock next to her, uh, next to her bed? All, 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 all I want to say is that, uh, I believe that was the room Twilight was staying in during the, um, uh, during the, her time in Canterlot. Well, you know, her, her, the library that she used to live in was gathering dust. <laughs> Yeah, that got awkward. I, I need to bring up something. Like it's uh it's nitpicking, but Luna sleeps with her horseshoes and tiara and whatever her crest is on. And this bothers me. Like it, I wanted to bring this up when we were reviewing the T Rex episode and just looking at this like Luna, why are you not taking off your horseshoes? And why do you have... Okay, you have slippers there, and you're wearing slippers. So it's like, yo, dog, I heard you like slippers, so I give you slippers on your slippers? Well, I, I'm sorry to break this to you, Norm, but you've discovered a very horrible truth. The princesses aren't wearing jewelry. They've actually got very uniquely shorn fetlocks. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a metallic service beneath their coats... They are the Iron Ponies. Da 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 da. <laughs> da 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 da. Uh, I accept this head cannon. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's it's always weird to see them sleeping in their finery. Yeah, uh, and, I, you're, I, and, and you're right. Adding slippers just makes it weirder. Yeah, it's cute. It's cute, but like the slippers thing, like the whole thing, if they took it off, makes more sense. But eh, nitpicking, picking, need picking. Anyway, so but Lou's like, I can't have a happy end to a dream. That's just my dream is not meant to end happy. <laughs> I'm Batman. I need to suffer. Ugh. My parents oh, are dead. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. So uh, after that scene, we cut to Carousel Boutique, where we see the main six are taking care of their uh, their pets, and. Whoop de doo, lo and behold, look who's there with Rainbow Dash. Yay, it's Tank. Woohoo! I, I actually predicted we'd see him before the season was half done and whoo! Nearly, nearly didn't make that bet. <laughs> but you made it, you made it. <laughs> I, tank I'm sorry. But... We'll live. <laughs> tank will live. Uh, and also I have to say I'm very happy to see that Aloy Issues is also there too. Like mm-hmm. after the library blew up into smithereens, even though Aloy Issues flew away, yeah, I was kind of worried that he might not make it. But the main six looks super tired. I mean, look at those back, backs under their eyes. Like, mm-hmm. wow. They haven't been sleeping very well lately. And uh, that's because they had a shared nightmare. They were all dreaming about the same thing. <laughs> A terrible creature well, uh, made out of black mass or something. Well, the main six here, well, uh, as cute as the time of taking care of their pets and grooming them, they are clearly tired. And it seems that, well, a shared dream calls for uh, help from Luna. Spike sends the message and they got the re- answer ASAP. <laughs> wow. Is it better than Twitter? I know. Super, super soy this. I know. Uh, and weird to see Princess Luna in the middle of the day, but, by the way. True. You can count the times you have seen Luna in the, in plain daylight uh, with the fingers on one hand. Twice. Well, I don't know. She, actually, I kind of view it as 50-50 at this point. Let's see here. Start of the Crystal Empire. Mm-hmm. End of the Crystal Empire. There's two. Uh, uh, let's see here. Helping Sweet Bell and For Whom Does Sweet Bell Toils. Mm, three. Three. Uh, Twilight's Kingdom. Twilight's Kingdom. Four. Uh, uh, Princess Twilight. Five. Uh, let's see uh, here. Princess Twilight? Yeah, she was, she was, uh, yeah, she was there with Twilight. Well, that, she was helping set the sun, but also, uh, Magical Mystery Cure. There we go. There's the one I think. Four. Cantaloupe. Oh, eating. right. Can't, well, there she showed no. up in the evening. Yeah, oh, she showed sorry. up when it was. Oh, yeah, there's a uh, coronation, sorry. And this one. So, seven. Wow. That's a lot. Okay, I was expecting less. They, she, she, they've been very brief appearances, is the thing. Mm. Anything true, true. truly substantial is at night. Now, mm. uh, but Luna, this is where I guess I want to talk about the Tentibus. Mm. Which, by the way, does anyone know the Greek story of Tentibus? No, I'm lost. No, I didn't. Uh, if you do, please illustrate us, because I want, I would like to know more about this. Tentibus is one freaky deaky guy. Oh. He, 
He is a symbol for eternal punishments. Now, not only has this guy committed uh, patricide and cannibalism, he I believe he uh, sliced and diced his son and fed the said child to the gods. What? My little pony, a family show. <laughs> so the gods, outraged by this, but also really embarrassed that they asked for seconds, uh, <laughs> they cursed him to the depths of uh, hell. Tartarus. Yeah, after Tartarus. Mm-hmm. He is eternally punished so that when he's thirsty, he'll reach for clear water, but it will always sink out of his reach. When he's hungry, he will reach for an apple, but it will always rise out of his grasp. Mm-hmm. He he is, and that's really as far as this association is meant to go, the concept of eternal punishment. Mm-hmm. Luna created this this nightmare Tantibus to forever punish herself. And here's the here's the reason I think this is actually a disservice to Luna's character. Uh, I've praised in the past that seeing her help the Kitamar Crusaders, being eager to help uh, with the Crystal Empire, that's a redemptive character. She's looking to make up for past mistakes by do- affecting positive events in the world. And in the case of Crusaders, she even looked to be enjoying what she was doing. Which makes the season two finale poster all the more awkward. You know, where the Crusaders are stealing her bling. But this this serves no purpose. She is punishing herself for the sake of punishment. There's no, there's not to teach her humility. It's not to guide her, help her reflect on her misdeeds. It's basically to say, I did something bad, so I should never let myself be happy again. And it's at this point, I'm starting to think, oh, why have we not seen more goth Luna? (laughs) What you see is that with Princess Luna in this episode, she is the horse version of Christian Grey. (laughs) <laughs> well, there's a psychological trauma to this character where she is getting better. People have forgiven her and accepting her into society. There's no more Nightmare Moon. Like the mare's tale of Nightmare Moon will eat you, whatever whatever it is. All that is the thing of the past. I think I just figured out why they are going with this at this time of the series. Well, if you notice, this season has been, uh, you know, flaunting the let's redeem characters, let's bring characters back, let's heal wounds from the past uh, theme. You have it with Gilda, you have Mm -hmm. it with Moondancer, and they seem to want to do something like this with Princess Luna. Mm -hmm. But the thing is that they were already doing it with Princess Luna because... She was helping Scootaloo, she was helping Sweetie Belle, and she was helping Apple Bloom. That is a good way to redeem the character without actually having to, you know, bring out Linkin Park and My Chemical <laughs> Romance and singing, crawling in my skin. Oh, no more. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I can see that too, and I do understand why they want to do that. Like, as for now, Luna never had a proper redemption story. Like what you said, Silver, everything has been told from little itsy bitsy bits of helping the CMCs and so on. But with this one, I'm thinking that even with all that under her belt, she still couldn't accept the fact that people are accepting of her and are willing to forgive her. Like, she doesn't feel that she is worth forgiving and she set the tentibus as something to haunt her dreams as punishment but that doesn't really advance her character it just sort of keeps her in that lock mindset of no advancement oh i'm forever punished well and it also reflects poorly on celestia well, I, I people have argued against my assumption that it's been one year since the series premiere you know mm-hmm. in the show context and fair enough you know different different perspectives on that but I think we can all agree it's been at least a year. Mm-hmm. I, I can agree with you that, like, um, after this episode, probably two. Maybe. I, again, um, not not sure. Mm-hmm. You know what? I will. I will. I will. I always. I always supported your perspective on the whole. It's been a year. The thing is that we know days of the week. We don't know months or how much seasons last. No. But we know that they have autumn, they have spring, they have winter, and they have summer. We know that because they, because of the details that they have. But we don't know if a year is 12 months or 12, 24 months or, or, or 36 months. We don't know that. It could very well be a year. We just don't know how long this year is. <laughs> uh, this is a funny topic because we 
keep on go we, we keep on talking about this topic on and on if i remember right we talked about this in the last uh review we did i think that was um what was that review again uh we were talking about the episode uh of uh, mending fences yeah so yeah like oh so, wow so uh, here i am tra- taking us down familiar territory but my my thing is was celestia aware that luna was doing this to herself this eternal punishment and if if she didn't know then she's not paying attention to her sister's mental well-being which is kind of how we bound up in this mess part of it at least and then if she did know she's been allowing this to happen either way this reflects kind of poorly on celestia by implication yes it does reflect poorly on celestia by implication um but then again you really don't know what people do behind closed doors let alone behind a dream mm-hmm. like you, you you really don't 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 know what they are doing or what, or what they are thinking and True. if the person if the person is an introvert you know it even less because they are not very likely to actually share this with you because they might feel up. I'm talking from personal experience right now, but if I am going through something bad or something terrible, I I don't feel comfortable flaunting it or or telling it to anybody. Mm-hmm. I will very much just keep it to myself because I will be embarrassed to talk about it. So yeah, I think I know where. Uh, where you're coming from, Silver, but I'm not sure if we can blame Luna, uh, Celestia completely mm. on what Luna is doing to herself. This is a situation where Luna is doing this to herself and if she doesn't say it, Celestia's never going to know because this is something personal. I can just imagine where when she's with Celestia, she's putting up a mask and talking about like happy things, like whatever conversation they might have. But in private quarters, she is sad and this is affecting her really bad. Uh, I can I can roll with the idea that uh, Luna's been putting on a mask. You know, goodness knows we all we all put on masks to meet mm-hmm. people. But <laughs> some of us literally. So it's the ah ha ha. But but Celestia also has been shown as a very sharp character, one who can see past the front's ponies and we and people love to say oh she knew about the paris prides and she just gave twilight a an easy out or some such so this is a blemish on her in, insightful nature luna is perhaps the one blind spot she suffers and i and i find that unfortunate but also it's just a sense of wow even when someone she loves is in a tight spot, Celestia doesn't get to be in the episode. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm, I'm thinking that even with how much insight Celestia has, I, I think this is, this comes down to Celestia either not noticing it or just is oblivious to the whole thing. But anyway, uh, let's move on. Yes, we have Lona arriving to to uh, Carousel Boutique. I always keep calling. I anytime that I see a house, I call it Dwarf Corner. What the hell? Oh my! So James, you want she... to come to my Carousel Boutique? Not really. Oh, and, uh... and the and the slash fiction begins. <laughs> <sighs> Norman S X James Cork. Good grief! No, thank you. Too old for my taste. Uh... <laughs> uh... So, Luna recruits the main six to ask her for help, because if the Tantabus ends up escaping the dream world, it's going to end up spreading all over Equestria, could sink it into an eternal nightmare. So, the uh, way that they decide to tackle on this one is to put all of the main six uh, in bed and get them to sleep, uh, we'll, while keeping Spike awake and uh, checking them, making sure that nothing goes wrong. Mm-hmm. And Luna making a shared dream kind of situation where she jumps from dream to dream trying to attract the Tantabus in order Mm -hmm. to keep it under control. And I have to say, detail regarding the color scheme on this scene in particular, I think we found out a way that the castle can look good with the rest of Ponyville. That is at night. Because if you see the colors of the houses, they are uh, like purple, violets, and blues with uh, yellow windows. That's more or less what the castle goes for when it when it comes to that. Are you guys uh, have you guys noticed that? Like mm. I'm seeing it on the wiki and I'm seeing this uh, this screenshot of the mm. castle at night with the town around it and I'm like, hmm, that actually it works. Looks, it, works. It, it works color scheme wise. Uh, I think it, it does. It, it blends more. 
But then we have to make, there are two observations for that. One, we can never see Ponyville in the day again. And two, <laughs> do you see how many lights are on in that castle? And they're it's... all in one room. This, her power bill, Princess <laughs> Twilight, is not environmentally friendly. I want to see the, the, uh, greenhouse footprint of that castle. <laughs> oh my. Al Gore is very cross at you, young lady. <laughs> Constant CO2 emissions. We are killing all of the tuna in that fountain behind the oh castle. Oh, God. Oh, no. Oh, no. It's very costly to make that castle glow. <laughs> you see, you just you just have to keep putting a AA batteries inside it over and over again. Oh. This is why I want Twitter rights as part of the real world. <laughs> True. <laughs> Either that or capture Diamond Tiara to keep her running on a <laughs> hamster wheel that keeps oh. charging the generator. And we're dark. Yep. And we're dark. So we we go to uh Twilight's uh bedroom. What uh, seems to be Twilight's bedroom at least because it's like you know seems like it. I mean ha- she has the, a telescope on there. Maybe one of the ones that survived the whole uh, exploding library incident. And the main six get in bed while uh, Luna connects uh, through them uh, with uh that magic sharing spell. And may I say for a moment my fanfic is canon now. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, pink, pinky and Applejack share a bed. What? No, no, not that. Is that, um, believe it or not, back in 2011, before I even got hardcore into the Brony fandom and everything, I wrote a fanfic that was a literal crossover of MLP with Inception. And I am so happy that more or less what happens here is what happens in that fanfic. <laughs> uh, boo. <laughs> what? Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, but then there's also, before we get into the dreams themselves, there's Spike saying, no po- well, no pony can resist the tantamus. Well, I'm no pony. True. And he's like so eager. He's like, oh, Spike, you're being helpful. You're, you're putting on, you're putting forth your best effort to help. You're not going to get to do anything, are you? <laughs> he's standing watch, but he doesn't get to do anything in the waking world. Yeah. Except well, maybe watch Rarity while she sleeps. Oh, wow. Uh, but one thing I need to mention, this is the second time where pulling Luna's mane is a way to attract her attention. It's like, you know, ringing a bell. You just have to pull up Princess's mane and then... She makes an adorable O face. <laughs> uh, oh, like, seriously, whenever I they know. pull Luna's mane, she looks so cute. Oh, God. Look yeah. at that. <laughs> He's adorable. Sorry. I'm a worse Luna fanboy than you, so <laughs> if that is even possible. I, I, ch- I challenge you, sir. <laughs> oh, I take my, my Luna fanboyism. I have so many things. I have a, I, I will uh, fight you with my Luna plushie. <laughs> uh, Tetra Pony beats you all. Oh my god, yes he does. Yes, he does. <laughs> uh, but anyway. <laughs> well anyway, they um they all go to sleep, Luna connects through them, and the first dream that we go into is uh Rarity. Where um, she suddenly gets attacked by a thin ver- uh, a dress version of the thin. John Carpenter John, John Carpenter's uh, the thin. Oh well. And I am glad to see that Rarity is not like Oh no, damsel in distress, don't hurt me. No, she goes and blasts her, blasts it with her, with her magic. It's like, I'm gonna kill you. Uh, like, but, good, good, my wife has been a badass. I mean, no, Rarity's been a badass, she's not my <laughs> wife. Uh, but this is something interesting where a person's dream is an insight to their subconscious, it's into their psyche. And we all know what Rarity likes. Making dresses and beautiful dresses. And, well, it seems that in her dreams, she dreams of flying dresses. Yeah, I will say half the main six, uh, their dreams really don't add anything to their characters. It's like, mm-hmm. yeah, that's kind of what I expected. Mm, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, it's a dream. Like, I, I don't expect anything awesome or new or different. I'm not expecting any slash fix. So, yeah, this uh-huh. is normal. This is normal, but man, when do we get to Fluttershy's fan? Oh, yeah. Man, this, oh, no, like... the Fluttershy one is amazing. <laughs> so let's go with Pinkie Pie next. And she's a little more fun. She's her, her classic power. She could world tour in a dream so easily. Yep. <laughs> and she manages to skip past through Princess Luna, who's like, hey, where are you going? Hey, come back. Oh, wow. Uh... What are you doing dream jumping like that? That's not good. That's not good. No, uh, th- this is just as random as can be. Like, yep, this this is this is pinky to a T. <laughs> With monster cakes. Oh wow, yeah. 
Not even that scares her. Like, jumping from location to location, and Luna trying to catch up with Tentabus, and somehow ending up in the Crystal Empire? What I find funny is that Spike's uh, statue makes another debut. Yeah, true, true, true. You can never have enough mileage out of that statue. Mm. It costed a lot of Photoshop hours to build that thing, don't you know that? Oh, I no, mean well, Adobe, uh, Adobe Flash. <laughs> I, I just keep expecting a crystal phone in the background to be waving, We're still relevant! Oh, yeah, <laughs> so true. We're still yeah. here, buy our toys, we have 50% discount on the Hasbro store. Uh-huh. And here I am off on the side going, <laughs> Why do you exist? <laughs> Why are you even there? What's your yeah. purpose? So we can have a very kick-ass comic coming up in a couple of uh, weeks. Yeah. Uh, well, coming up next is ice cream. A very small ice cream, yet big at the same time. Uh, anybody in Ponyville wants to share? I don't want an ice cream. Uh, but no, let's talk about Fluttershy's dream. Because... <laughs> and, uh, now, it's, and now it's weird. Yeah. Mm. Uh, it's, nice to be, it's nice to be the pet sometimes. Uh, but, uh, but you have uh, Discord for that, you know that, right? No, uh, that's slash fake territory. But no, this is the part where I can see this happening because Fluttershy takes care of the pets and she takes good care of them. And sometimes she wants to be pampered. And, well, this is one of those dreams where I can see this happen. Maybe this is why she likes to go to the spa visits with Rarity. Ah, uh, true. She likes to have someone dote on her a little. Mm-hmm. But I see the I see this caption on uh, on the My Little Pony wiki with Angel brushing her hair. This is why Angel deserves forgiveness. No, no, he doesn't. This, this is a dream, not real. Th- th- yes, this is a dreamscape. Your real Angel. Where is your Angel Bunny now? Oh, he is in a couple of seconds because then he turns into a monster, and you're like, ah, that's the Angel we all know and love. Is that an absolute? <laughs> that's not a word. Uh, that's not a word. <laughs> He's a little. That's not a word. Anyway, he's, he, I will say he's he's actually he's being honest in this representation. Uh, true. Yeah, true. yeah, he is. Angel, more like the devil. <laughs> he's the devil. He's like, he's like a Final uh... Fantasy salmon. He's he's like an a, 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 he's like an Eidolon. That's what he's like. Uh, the oh. devil. Uh, don't don't let Spoonie hear you. Betrayal! Uh, betrayal! Uh... Betrayal! Uh, well, well, it, it seems that uh, while Luna leaves Fluttershy to fend off for herself, uh, we go to Applejack's dream now. Which, good lord, that didn't last long. This, poor Applejack. This is the one time she could have been more than just talking about apples. What do they do? It's the giant apple, apple that was from an ap- actual episode. <laughs> Uh, she likes Apple so much, she just keeps dreaming of apples. Yeah, and Apple uh, accessories. Yeah, I guess this is the part of the episode where you're like, yeah, this, uh, this, uh, it is clear they are adding nothing mm. uh, new to the characters. Except uh, Flutter Shy. Mm-hmm. I, I will say, I will say that the, that Rainbow Dash actually yes, is yeah. a lot of fun. I think that's the best dream of all. But before we carry on, before we continue on with this, I want to ask, who was surprised with this uh, segment here where uh, Luna comes in, we see Rainbow Dash fighting with Changelings? This, this, was anybody surprised with this being her real dream instead of a nightmare? I was happy. I, I was not surprised that Rainbow would dream of action and adventure and a little bit of violence. Yeah, not surprised at all. Not surprised, but still delighted to see. It's like, mm-hmm. okay, here we go. Yeah. This is one of the best dream sequences. Yeah. This and this and Fluttershy are probably the two biggest impacts. Mm-hmm. Agreed, absolutely agreed. But this one in particular, because it's <laughs> it's so in character with Rainbow Dash. It's so <laughs> cool. It's like, yeah, I'm being a badass. I'm being awesome. Then cut to a segment that belongs on Barney the Dinosaur. Oh God! <laughs> Actually, it's kind of funny. This this episode prepared me for Dragon Ball Rebirth of F. <laughs> really? I, I okay. Th- this happens at the very beginning of the movie, so I don't consider it a spoiler. I really don't. Do you want to know the eternal punishment that Frieza was sentenced to for all his heinous acts and oh, all God. his destructive? <laughs> he is sealed yes. in a cocoon and dangled from a tree. In a land very similar to what we see here. And you just see him, cocooned, face sticking out of the cocoon, glaring at the world with gritted teeth. <laughs> hating oh, so everything. <laughs> An eternity of this dream. Rainbow Dash knows not how lucky she is. She only has to put up with this for a night. 
Oh, wow. I remember the scene. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, oh. that is pretty funny. <laughs> Uh, I was wondering how you could relate to that. <laughs> it was I saw that scene and thought, My Little Pony and Dragon Ball. If Tira can cause the bridge already, there you go. <laughs> uh nice. And on to our last pony. Twilight Dreams of Books, so oh, what a shock. Uh-huh. Uh, no, that's that's not new. Although <laughs> you know what? It's... The surest way for this to live in infamy is if Twilight was surrounded by flash centuries. I know <laughs> <laughs> yes. I just, uh, that's no, what that's... <laughs> That would have been the, oh, wow. you, you know what could have made this okay? I I do understand why they don't want to do it, but you know what could have made this awesome if Twilight was dreaming about having a date or being in on a beach with Flash just hanging out and almost kissy face and Luna just comes in. You know, in, you it would well, have pissed off so many fans. But I know it would have been a lot of people angry. But it's like th- that would be on the jokey side of things. Um. If you realize all of the segments, all of the dream segments have a comedic uh, kind of like impact when, like, uh, yeah, okay, it's a kid's show, you need to keep it funny and all that, but you, they could have done something a bit more, you know, dramatic with it. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know, wouldn't you, wouldn't it be really interesting to see uh, the Tantaver suddenly turning one of the books into T-Rex or turning them into uh, Queen Chrysalis? Like, we have seen the changelings. Why not bring in that back? If Twilight were to be afraid of something, wow, can you, can you imagine? Like, the dream is like, oh, I'm so happy with my big brother best friend forever and my uh, sister-in-law. This is so great. Then suddenly her brother turns into, uh, uh, <laughs> turns into a monster and uh, uh, the cadence turns into chrysalis and it's like, ah, they're trying to attack her. Well, that would have been, I don't know. That would be awesome. That would be awesome. But, it's it will be too complicated for what it's trying to tell because the whole scenario here is Luna trying to catch the Tentabus, but the Tentabus escapes. Like it goes through all the main sixes dreams and a few more later on. I just I just how can I describe this? There is comedy in seeing their dreams turn on them, mm-hmm. uh, and it'd be fun. I I wish that they could have pushed the envelope of saying this is what's going on with the main six. They've got a little bit of freaky dreaming going on and to be honest i'm still hung up on showing uh, twilight and flash because it would have caused such a stir oh yeah my inner troll would have been delighted i know you know you know what i'm gonna say this i think that will be the kind of thing that rebecca sugar would have done (laughs) because Uh, she does that all the time with steven universe (laughs) but honestly speaking do you really want to make your fans angry like do, do you want to risk it like I guess yes. yeah. <laughs> you I guess would, this is, but this is would... one of the this is one of the cases where playing it too close to the chest and playing it too safe kind of like works a- against it. Sometimes when you take risks and you make things different and you are like, oh yeah, no, I'm gonna see, I, I'm gonna do this just to see the effect that it causes on oh, people. Wow. But do you really want to? Dude, I am going to do that with movies late in a couple of weeks, and it's going no. to be a carnage. I okay. cannot wait for it. No, but here's the thing. like, We do want some dreams to happen. A good example here is just Twilight and Flash. We just want that dream sequence to happen. Like, That will be so amazing. That will be so funny. That would be just, just the reaction from the fan would be so good. But the problem is, do you want to have some random soccer mom emailing Hasbro to just say some things that might in the long run, affect the show and hurt the show. We've been there before and the show's still here. So Yeah, but still, like, the last time that happened, they censored Derpy. I'm not asking that Twilight and Flash have, you know, a romantic... I know. Uh, it's the just in a dream sequence. It's just in a but dream sequence. But Even just <laughs> share a dinner or something. It'd be, yeah. I just would want to see the fandom explode in outrage. I know. I, I too want that, but I can see why <laughs> they don't. Some I can see why they in don't. Some the podcast want to see the world. <laughs> it's just, here's the thing. It's mm. just, you know, people take it so seriously. I, okay, slight diversion, but mm. you know, I did a Flash Sentry video. <laughs> yes. It's my most watched video. I don't know if people <laughs> just like rewatch it a lot. And it's the one that gets mm. some very polar reactions because some folks really hate Flash. Some folks really want to defend him. Mm-hmm. And it's just fascinating to see. And yes, I'm a, I'm trollish in that I'd want to see this strong reaction from people. I know. I'm I'm with you here, Silver. I am with you. But I am also playing devil's advocate, where 
Holy cow, it's like the most popular by like one million. My <laughs> god. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't I don't understand. I don't consider it's, it my funniest. Yeah. I think but, it's because it's um it's the first time that they uh, they um explicitly introduced a lo- a long lasting romantic relationship mm, in the show probably. with one of the, ca- the the main character in the series no less. Yeah. And people got very angry, very adamant against Flash Sentry. And mm-hmm. people got very forward, very defensive of Flash Sentry. Yeah. There is like there is no middle point. Either you hate the guy or you like the guy. I like uh, Flash Sentry. I, I'm but okay with the guy. Like not enough to actually, you know, ah, you stop abusing Flash Sentry. This is not good. Well, yeah. back back to what I was saying. Like I'm playing devil's advocate here, where I'm looking at both grounds, and I can understand why people are hating on Flash for reasons. Some of them are good. Some of them are. Uh, not, but I'm not going to dwell on it because Rainbow Dash has a cute face. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the cute face ends all arguments. Yes, no. like, look at no, that no, face. Not just cute face. I mean, I have that GIF on on my tabs on mm-hmm. Firefox. I have had that GIF ever since the episode came out. It's like her rocking back and forth, hugging her knees, going, no, not again, not again, not again. Uh, never I don't sleep. want that. I never sleep. <laughs> I went I to have... their people once and I can never forget what I saw. I don't want it. I don't want it. I have seen Freeze's hell. <laughs> Nothing in life can oh, scare me. Wow. Well, yeah. Oh, Lord. Anyway, so now we get into the massive shared dream, the group sleep. Yeah, that is not just the mistakes, but the entirety of Ponyville joins yeah. in on the... How did that happen? Uh, because Princess Luna is super powerful. The other reason why is because... Uh, Luna explained the situation where each of the main six did not dream of anyone in their dreams. Pinkie Pie, on the other hand, dreamt the whole town of Ponyville. And they are now infected with the Tedibus. Uh, oh, yes. She, off screen to punish she said, hey, do you guys want a taste? <laughs> yep. So now everyone's in danger. But let us once again pause to admire the friendship between Lyra and Sweetie Drops. Oh, oh this, yes. are you going there? This this comes right after the debut of the Equestria Girl short, uh, yeah. sorry, Friendship Game short, where I joined with my violet skinned brother and saying that went to Weirdsville very quick. <laughs> oh, I have I absolutely adore this moment. He's like, they are so cute, <laughs> they are so happy. Look at that. Uh, Silva, are you talking about the Equestria Girl short? Yeah. Did you watch with... it in English or Spanish? Uh, in in both. Oh. Hablo, so, hablo solo un poco español y mi español es muy mal, pero uh, este es loco. It's, it's still better than some of what I heard, actually. <laughs> sí. Uh, uh, okay, because I, I only saw it in Spanish, but yeah. Okay. Your Spanish is right. But, no, either, but either, yeah, this, is Lyra, this is Lyra and Sweetie Drop's thing now. Mm-hmm. Slice of Life was Pandora's box. It opened... Oh. <laughs> it opened up several characters to a more consistent uh appearance, maybe not role, but appearances. And now they I think the show's gonna milk these two in their yeah. friendship Ka-dog. for all it's worth. But look at that, they are so cute. They are it, it doesn't matter if they are fused together like fusion. <laughs> it doesn't matter if they are fused together, they are hugging each other. Like yeah. well, <laughs> This is so adorable. Look at uh, that. Well, he, here comes where Princess Luna joins every pony in Ponyville's dreams together. And we get, uh, well, we get this strange dream where a giant derpy's here. We got cat, di- cat dog Lyra Bon Bon. The, uh, very punch head flies away in, uh, in a balloon uh. because it's an airhead. Also, y- you remember that pony that is always like flying on like balloons, helicopters, all that? She's flying on a boat in between two houses. What? Yes. Yeah, there she is. Uh, yeah. yes, Bear, uh, Cherry Berry, the proof that this show really wants to have an on-screen mortality. <laughs> also, there is like the, the, the walking street lamp. Big Macintosh is a unicorn. What? Yep. <laughs> oh, wow. One, one pony wants to be really tiny and is being chased by Opal. <laughs> oh, wow. That's just freaky. And Big Mac summons apples that tall can say, yup. Oh uh, well, here comes a very interesting thing where okay, the pony of Ponyville sees Luna bows, and Luna explains about the tentabus. I don't remember. Yeah, oh, they it's... all get together and they realize that Luna is the one keeping their, their their dreams connected. 
And just, it's something awful is coming. Oh, it's already here. And there's Attack on Titan. (laughs) (laughs) And so begins the shout outs. Oh, yes. I mean, there's great uh, heroism on all sides from, well, our hero, our heroines, including the return of the uh, ever popular Flutterbat. Yes. (laughs) Flutterbat makes a comeback, but it's not just on the side of uh, the main six. Uh, uh, saving the town. I mean, everyone joins in, and out of uh, out of all the ponies, Filthy Rich. Who would have thought that Filthy Rich actually had the the, the you know courage of a superhero? Mm-hmm. I was so yeah. happy to actually see that. Well, you're, you're jumping the gun here, but I am. I am. I know. We're, we're I seeing... cannot help it. I really like that guy. I don't. I don't have any. Hatred towards filthy. I think he's yeah. a really nice, really yeah, we, interesting character. Like we mentioned in the last review, but no, uh, the the most important one here, it's a fandom ceiling. It's Princess Big Mac. Yeah, I kept hearing the Sailor Moon transformation. <laughs> with with yeah, with magical girl transformation included. <laughs> uh, let's uh, let's look back in 2013 to uh, the the. the Fantastic and super talented Pixel Kitties. One of the most lovable people in the fandom. And she creates this outrageous, for lack of a better word, character mm. interpretation. Big <laughs> Mac as a princess. <laughs> then Peter New goes to a convention dressed as Princess Big Mac. Uh, and now but, it's canon. <laughs> but there's more to that, James. There's more to that. Because after the Pixel Kitties comic, um, Ellie Monty a uh, very popular brony voice actor slash singer um, did a comic dub for this one. And she dubbed the comic. And if I do remember right, an uh, artist from this show did some fan art. And if I'm not mistaken, Peter New retweeted it or posted it? Yeah. I, I don't I, Are you talking about that I did one little bit of fan art <laughs> of Big Macintosh and Peter New liked it so much that he actually posted it on his Facebook? Yes. <laughs> Why did you have to bring me into the spotlight? I don't like it. Uh, I have to say one thing, however. I did a print of Princess Big Mac for uh, back 2014 and for Bronny Scott. That's the one print that sold out in like the first hour. <laughs> nice. Everybody, everyone loves Princess Big Mac. And p- for good reason. I mean, look at that. That is the most magnificent creature in the whole show. Uh, I, oh, I love it. It's so it. good. I've always wanted to see a male alicorn. I'll I'll take it. <laughs> I'll, I'll, ta- I'll I'll take it too. And it's like that is so neat that and I think this is uh goes back to what you were saying at the beginning of the review, Silver. That the shout outs in this episode feel a lot more organic. Mm. They feel like they belong more. Um, yeah. because even Princess Big Mac has kind of a build up because you first see Big Mac in the unicorn. And then they are like, hey, you can actually take it up a notch. And then he goes up a notch and turns into an alicorn. It's like, mm. even that has a better progression than um, it happens just because. Well, here's the thing with this one. I don't want to go back to our review of Slice of Life because that episode by itself already has a lot of things going for it. It was what the 100th episode. It was the episode where the main six were not involved. I mean, I'm not going to go into that. Like, if I were to go into it, uh, just read my comments on that. Like, I, I talked to a few um, fans who commented, and yeah, I'm not going to go into that again. Like, this one, it's in a dream sequence. Anything, anything that can happen will happen, and it did happen. Anything goes. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's free roam mode from this moment on. There mm-hmm. is no... Limit to what you can do. True, true. And then we just go rapid fire. Filthy Rich becomes a money wizard. The return of power ponies. Yeah, yeah. Probably yep. Spike turns into his his Spike Knight yes, mode. Spike Knight mode. Oh, uh, you also flying find... on Derpy. Yeah, yeah. And also like uh, Filthy here reminds me of Iceman. He actually yeah. reminds me more of Iron Man. He's Iron the Tony Man? Stark. No, yeah, he's... why not? Yeah, come on. He's like. Ah, I'm shooting no, you with my t- money. Take a look, see, like, <laughs> he, he is Iron Man. Like, he's using the, um, his hooves no, to but... create a flow of, yeah, you know what, this no, is coming. Yeah, no, yeah, whatever, he's, whatever, he's, whatever. He's, no, but yeah, he's like Iceman. He's like Frozen from The Incredibles. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, yeah. Scootaloo grows giant wings, which is heartbreaking when you think about it. 
Yeah. <laughs> oh, but in your, in your dreams is where you can explore everything. And hey, she's getting Rainbow's respect in reality. Mm-hmm. Twilight and... summons her library back into life. Oh, yes. What, How many? <laughs> Oh wow! Ah, but that was that was neat. It's like oh, for a for a glimpse, for a brief moment, we get to see that uh, uh, that beautiful tree house. It's 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 good to have it back for just like a smidge of second. Also, in Apple your Jack, dreams. Applejack likes to wear her uh, her cowboy hat when she's a power pony. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's I, I approve. Although you know, if they really wanted to break people's hearts, the Tandemus could have crushed the library again. Oh. And Twilight could just be there, like, "Oh, come on! <laughs> Can you imagine? That would be great." Oh, why didn't they, they do that? They should have done that. Uh, okay, like couple destroying the library again with a flash century dream, and mm. the fandom just ignites. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> wow, I am, I am really loving these doomsday scenarios right now. You, mm-hmm. You're sitting from your tower going, dance, puppets, dance. <laughs> <laughs> uh, feed me your age. <laughs> does, does becoming president of Hasbro work like becoming president of the United States, or do you actually have to work for it? Oh. Ooh. <laughs> oh. Because yes. if it's, if it is like that, well, I'm willing to help you get to become president of Hasbro. Oh. But with our valiant effort from our heroes, it doesn't seem to work. The Tentabus is getting stronger each minute. And the problem seems to come from Luna herself because she's not forgiving herself. And wow, this is something deep. Actually, we kind of, we kind of glossed over a very questionable line from Luna earlier. Yeah. Uh, what was that? I think just before she creates this gestalt dream, she says, I will do anything to atone for my mistakes, even accepting your help. Like, well, I'm glad you hold these ponies in such high regard, Luna. That's <laughs> nice. Uh, hey guys, uh, I'll do anything to spread joy and involvement of this show, even if it means appearing on this silly podcast. Ah! No! <laughs> Wow. What? what? No, that's... First off, that's not how I feel. I truly enjoy this. <laughs> oh, good, 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 good. I was worried for a moment. I was like, oh, no, no why? Uh, I'll sip you the 50 later, man. I'll sip you the 50 later. But if, but if I said that, wouldn't I sound like the world's biggest jerk? <laughs> yeah, you would. Yeah, you absolutely would. I... Okay, now, maybe a bad example because I've been fantasizing about driving the fandom into rage this, this review, but... <laughs> so I really am the world's biggest jerk, but... No, you're not. Yes. <laughs> oh, I'm here to, I've got an angel and a devil sho- uh, on my shoulders here. More gasoline, more fire, more gasoline, more fire. <laughs> no, no. But no, but what is silly? Well, what? Well, just that Luna saying that line. Mm-hmm. I get what she's trying to do. She'll do anything to make up for her mistakes, even get over her own pride. But they phrased it really, really awkwardly. Hmm. Well, I, I guess it's a situation where you really need to pay attention to it because I didn't find it that questionable. I'm not sure. You know, I think this is kind of like forcing the character to have a character arc. More like. Uh, because the, 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 the ending of this episode cannot be any other ending than to having a happy one. So in the end, the Tantabus is going to go back to Luna's, uh, to, 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 to Luna's body. So if you don't make the, the, the first half or the first two thirds of the arc, really dark and really des- desperate. You you cannot justify having a happy ending at the end, and I think that comes at the at the expense of her characterization. It is weird, but we haven't seen Princess Luna smile any time during this episode up until the very end. True, true. And her expressions of like this, she's not just sad; she's suffering. Like I, it, this is like torture for her. She's not enjoying any of this. She, if if she could, she stop it. Well, she's not supposed to enjoy this. This is a world threat. It's also something she created to make herself suffer. So, uh, good job, Luna. Your your feng shui is working. Yep, you you got one thing right. <laughs> you know, it. This is the hard thing with redemptive characters in a show that really is meant to be self-contained to just twenty-minute stories. This can't be an overarching theme with Luna. It can't be uh, something we, we revisit over and over. It's got to be wrapped up by the end. So this scene, while it's clear that she's suffering, it's also a very swift resolution. 
perhaps and real life or rather real characterizations usually takes more time. This is the kind of thing that could go on for like two or three episodes. This is not something that ends and that's it. It's like, oh, the end of the episode and there you go. I think this is, this is again DHX, uh, and the, the guys working on the show being commanded by Hasbro. You need to make every episode self-contained so we can have reruns. I think the guys that work on the show, they should try to make a point and say, hey, look, uh, a Hasbro, guys, come here, come here. Uh, there is this uh, TV channel called Cartoon Network. They do reruns on the, all the time, and they don't limit the writers to the, uh, you know, self-contained episodes. Are you, um, you, you mean that channel that ran Johnny Twist 23 out of 24 hours? <laughs> yeah, that oh, one. Wow. Invoking Cartoon Network is a double-edged sword. <laughs> oh, it yeah. is a double-edged sword. And there is no network that is perfect, but on that regard, Cartoon Network that things, does things better than, uh, than Hasbro is doing. And, and I am counting Hasbro as a network because I don't consider Discovery Family a network per se. They are a jumble mess when it comes to network. I don't people. think so Ooh. anymore because... Oh, God. Are you kidding? No, because here's the thing. Um, previously the hub network, I can say that's under Hasbro, but right now with how things are going, uh, most of their big shows like um, Transformers, Robots in Disguise, that's on Cartoon Network. Like most of their big guns that they're hoping for, has moved to places. Like okay, uh, Discovery has taken My Little Pony, and Cartoon Network has taken Transformers. So that's the two shows I see that's making Hasbro big cash. You honestly hope that they take My Little Pony to Cartoon Network at this point. I really am. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Either, either way, either mm. way, let us let us continue on for there is plenty to speak of, although we're kind of at the end. Yeah, the epilogue. Yeah, we're pretty much, we're pretty much ending because this is the part, this is the part where uh, Luna finally uh, succumbs to the love of the main six. So she's like, yeah, okay, I... I am willing to forgive myself because all of you have forgiven me or something like that. And the Tantabus, that, that's powerful enough to make the Tantabus go back, reducing its size and go back inside Princess Luna. Everybody wakes up and then they discover that Princess Luna is now asleep in a happy landscape with flowers mm-hmm. and um, perhaps that guy from Avatar jumping around. And <laughs> I don't know. Uh, kind of reminds be... me of Pandora from, yeah, oh, kind of reminds me of Pandora from, Ava- oh. from Avatar. But yeah, th- this is also where um, the main six did nothing kind of episode. It was all a dream. They talked. <laughs> well, they they did a lot of talking. I know. But oh, it was just all a dream. <laughs> a dream. But a dream where they did things. That's, yeah. that's, the, that's the difficulty. That's yeah. the challenge. You know, I have to bring up something. Like, I remember in writing class where... The first big no-no or the two big no-nos in writing a story is Once Upon a Time and It Was a Just All a Dream are the two big no-nos that you should not write. Yeah, because well, but that this is would... kind of like straightforward on that regard. Normally. Yeah, true. I mean, um, it, but in terms of writing, it is kind of ingenious. Like how they play with the role of It Was Just All a Dream and to credit another show, Inception, It Was Just All a Dream. That was good too. But it wasn't. Or was it? But, 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 I I think we reach our end, right? We very much have, yes. Unless we have something else to say. Well, I think it's on to final thoughts. Final thoughts? Silver? Yes, I think we are at the final thought edge. How to describe this episode, because it's such a mix of things. It's fun. Overall, it's fun. You get to see these shoutouts. You get to see the return of Luna. You get to see the main six dreams for some more outrageous than others. So in terms of just enjoyment, there's plenty to be had and plenty of fun. In terms of characterization, I'm not sure. I I wish that this had come up earlier in Luna's uh, stories, that maybe this could have been a season three episode. Earlier on, seems like a better chance for Luna to open herself up to forgiveness. Having seen this after her assistance to the Crusaders, I'm like, yeah, this actually feels like a regression in her development. So, give and take, basically. So, I consider it an enjoyable episode. I won't say it's the best. It's, it's not the standout of season five in my example, in my view. I will say that in terms of integrating 
fan shout outs and fandom ideas, uh, it, I think it did it more organically than Slice of Life. And that's, that's really all I got to say. I enjoyed the episode. The episode is one of those episodes where I don't mind rewatching again because it has a few elements that I like where, okay, A, you got Luna, B, it's a funny story here and there and it has some good scenes in it, like the whole Rainbow Dash dream sequence, um, after the dream sequence, the Princess Break Max sequence, like everything in here, like what Silver said, I do agree. The character the characterization of some of the characters did not progress, but hey, uh, it didn't hurt the show in terms of um, this was supposed to happen and here's how it was done. Overall, it was a good episode. Like I like it. I I would recommend this to people to watch. Yeah, you know what? I think I'm almost following on your uh, on your on your thoughts. I, it sounds like I almost have no personality because I, <laughs> what you guys said is pretty much more or less what I think. Uh, with a couple of silver linings, like well, I already said, I I, I loved seeing Princess Luna just suffering through this like like a horse. <laughs> it was awesome. Um but I I guess that's that comes from my sadist kind of like side. Like oh, I, I, I I am the kind of person that loves to see a character suffer. Especially if it's a character that I really like. And like it it in this show it happens with uh it happens with Princess Luna, it happens with Rarity, it happens with Applejack. Like I love to see my favorite characters just going through very tough times. And like, how are they going to get out of this one? How are they going to, to solve this situation? Uh, the way they solve it with this one is not that satisfying. In kind of like, it feels more like a MacGuffin slash, uh, the Deus Ex Machina. It's like a Deus Ex Machina, very much. Um, the Deus Ex Machina is a speech from Twilight Sparkle. But I love the creativity, uh, the, amount of shoutouts and the amount of uh, imagination that they put on this episode is just remarkable. And I think it flows a lot better and it moves a lot faster than uh, previous episodes. Like, I don't know if you've noticed, but during season 5, some of the episodes they felt a bit like they were dragging. Um, I'm talking about a party pooped, I'm talking about the lost treasure of Griffonstone. Despite how much I like those episodes... I always felt like they were longer than they were. And this was kind of like, this one kind of like flew by. I, I could have this episode on repeat and don't get tired of it, even though I wouldn't say it's a flawless episode, like I was saying at the beginning, uh, when I first watched it. But I liked it. I think this is Scott Sunborn's uh, best work to this date, after the episode we have Upper Bloom and the Chimera and Tradia. And the, and the premiere, actually, I will say this is better than the premiere. Uh, of season five, at least from a, from a character perspective and interest, I, I was more engaged on this one than on the first two episodes. And I, I know it's weird; those two episodes are all about making the main six suffer and all that. But I enjoyed the suffering a lot more. Scott Sonborn, what is with you on making characters suffer? I mean, why can I get enough of that? Oh, you <laughs> sadist! Yeah, can't can help it. Can't help it, guys. I'm sorry, but no, I'm not sorry. Not sorry at all. <laughs> Oh, you. But anyway, what's next week's episode going to be, man? Um, You know what? Now that we have officially run out of episodes to review on the season, because this is episode 13, mm -hmm. and episode 14 doesn't premiere until the 12th, 12th of September. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So, uh, we sh I vote to focus solely on the comics that we have left. All right. And if I recall correctly, the next comic that we should be reviewing will be the Friends Forever issue number 17. Yep. Yep, starring Princess Twilight and Big Macintosh. Mm. Written by Ted Anderson, with art by Brenda Hickey and colors by Heather Breckel. Right? Yep. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Although, in the, in the wake of this, I don't know if Princess Twilight can really stack up to the Princess Tosh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Well, uh, we'll uh, just have to wait and see because we'll have to wait and see. that that re that comic was just strange. It was a bizarre comic, like almost everything on this fandom. But True. that is a story for another time. Thank you guys so much for watching this podcast. You guys are awesome for following us here and for watching it out. Yeah, you're great. Without you, we wouldn't be here. 
And we hope to see you on the next episode. This has been James Cork. And I am a sleepy little son, so... Oh. And I'm going to feature Twilight Times Flash in my review. And Yay! make you all bad. <laughs> I like it. Me like I it. I fell into a burning ring of fire. I went down, down, down. And the flames went higher. That's not my usual okay. music. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> Have a good one, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Adios.